Have you ever heard about private conversations in public? I'm going to do a private conversation in public. I'm going to have a conversation with two people. So we had invited, and we have invited, Duncan and Esterine to just reflect on what they heard. And I was going to do that after some conversation, but my intuition is to let you two comment, because you may actually distill a number of things. Thank you. I think this has really been a very interesting session and really illuminating in, in the, the variety of issues that have come um, from the working groups. Um, but I, my interpretation of the session was that you want to hear from us what the global donor um, platform should focus on um, and how it can use its membership to do things on the ground. So I, I will start by saying that the, the good news is that what I've heard is everybody is in agreement that we need action. Um, but the difference is, I think the actions are different levels. So we are seeing actions that are really like micro, micro level, and we are seeing the macro level actions. Um, in my view, I think that as a global donor platform, um, you have a wonderful opportunity to influence issues at a strategic level um, in your ability to engage in platforms um, at the international um, um, level, but also engagement with governments. Um, I think also that there are other platforms where development partners meet, and you have to make a difference. What do you want to be like? Are you like the other ones? What is your value addition? And in my view, I think that value addition should be picking on substantive issues and supporting them. And that does not mean that the global donor platform is the one implementing those issues, but you are working with institutions to be able to deliver on those substantive issues. So, for instance, you could support the work that FAO is doing, you could support the work that NEPAD is doing, like the program that we presented yesterday. So, as a group, and somebody used that word, joint action, as a group you can endorse an idea and a program and, and support it. Um, on the issue itself, the subject that we are discussing today, I think we should step back and look at this gender empowerment, um, not just as an issue of agriculture, but an issue of rural transformation and development. And I think if we place that in that context, we can each, um, address the critical issues that is all about equity, right, and justice for women um, participation in the economic life of their countries. So if we look at it from that perspective, then we should be supporting issues of governance at all levels. So political governance that encourages participation um, Governance at the level of the communities. Um, we heard a lot about the role of traditional leadership. So bridging that and, and providing those linkages between political and, and traditional systems, I think is important, particularly for, in the, I'm speaking as an African. From an African perspective, it is very important that we make those linkages and support um, the, the, the creation of space where we can have active dialogue amongst the different um, stakeholders and players in the community. For me, the focus is about um, communities because that is the space where any empowerment of women um, will make sense. And to also make the point that uh, when we talk about empowerment, my, I would like to say as Monique said earlier, African women have a lot of knowledge and they have a lot of power. I can assure you that. It's not seen up front, um, but behind the scenes, they really have a lot of power. What we are talking about is capacitating, helping them, creating the space that they can express themselves better, they can use that power better, and they can deliver um, for 
their communities, well, for their families, for their communities, for, for their nation. So um, I think empowerment, that word is very good, but I think women have power. What women need is to get that space to be expressed, that power that they have, the potential that they have, and for that to happen, let's look at the gov governance systems that are there. Let's look at the support in terms of policies. Um, yesterday we spoke about positive discriminatory policies. Those policies that can help empower these women to, whether it's participating in the market, whether it's taking goods to the market, whether it's addressing the issue of post-harvest laws. Let's look at that. I, 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 I always remember um, some years ago, when I used to work in WWF, we visited a project on the field, and we were working on a bushmeat project, telling communities not to eat bushmeat. Um, and the, the lady whom we spoke to, she said to me, you know, my daughter, I'm, I'm really glad that you, you people are here, um, and I would like to have a daughter like you who have gone to school and can go and, and say these things. But I have all these crops I grow here, they plant things, I cannot take it to the market because there are no roads. I don't have access to grow my small uh, resources to grow my small businesses because I don't have uh, 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 um, collaterals to get credit. So we know the issues. I would just like to leave this conversation to say, we also know some of the solutions, the issue of how do we deliver on those solutions. So actions, 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 and let's think about the best mechanism to deliver on the solutions that we know are there, um, and look for experiences in other places that have some solutions and bring them to our communities so that um, they can either adopt them, replicate them, but, um, work collectively and move forward. I, yesterday I used the word, we are, you know, kind of in a seesaw position, going up and down, but we are not moving. Let's move. And I'm appealing to this group because again, I said in Paris, I'm not sure I have an opportunity to address you again. So now that I have, I have to say what I think. Please, this is a wonderful and excellent platform use it for positive change so that you can realize, you know, look back and say, I helped make a difference in the life of an African woman, in the life of a community, in the life of a nation. Thank you. Okay, wow, well, I, I don't know how I can follow that. Is, that. is this, can you hear me? Yeah. Like that. Oh, wow. It gets louder if you pull it away. <laughs> okay, so I'm Duncan Pruitt. I'm, I work for uh, Oxfam, and I'm in the process not of deliver, de developing a gender program, but our global land program. Uh, so I'm, to a certain extent, I would say I'm not a specialist. Uh, what I did to try to prepare for this session was I, I came up with a kind of scorecard um, so I tried a sort of technical approach um, to, of the issues which, which I kind of partly on behalf of Oxfam but partly on behalf of myself and what I was looking for, I could grade, grade the, the, what came back from the working groups just to give a personal perspective. That was what I was encouraged to do. And so I'm going to start with a bit which made me feel a little bit less comfortable when I heard back from the working groups. Um, I got, I've written a list, more evidence, context analysis, more knowledge, education, gender skills, policy reform, sharing information and coordination, resources needed, concrete action, unspecified. So there's nothing wrong with that list, but it's remarkably general and remarkably unspecific. Um, and I, I don't it doesn't feel to me like it reflects the, the expertise and the progressive stuff that we've been hearing through the rest of the day. Um, so at the risk of being unpopular, I, I just 
I wonder why we couldn't come out with a, with a clearer agenda for action, uh, or why, the, why, why there's so many things which, which sound a bit woolly. I mean, these are obviously fine things to do, um, but I, I don't know. I, I wonder whether that, why isn't there more convergence on specifics? Um, so that's a, that's a question back to people. I, I don't know the answer, but I also listen to the different groups. Oh, I see a green card there. I'm not asking for votes at this stage. But I'm going to go through my list. I, I came up with six factors that I, of things I was looking for coming back from the working groups and just tell you a little bit about those things. So the, the one I th was at the top of my list was, these are, actually it's not in order of importance, but the, the first thing was uh, increasing the political voice of women. And that, that came up a little bit earlier in the day. It did come back from, I think the, I saw it in the red and yellow groups um, mentioning that. So I was uh, pleased to see that there. Um, but, but actually, for, for us, that's really central because, it, because you want to support um, demand, the demands of women themselves to, to ask for what they want. It's probably hidden in some of those general things. The second one is changing social norms through change of attitudes and beliefs. And there were some references today to use of media and uh, uh, celebrities and things like that. Um, but it didn't come back very much, I thought, in the working groups. And I wonder whether we shouldn't be really being more ambitious here to think about how to change things. And there's plenty of examples of great stuff happening there. And uh, to plug Oxfam, we've, we've, we've uh, developed a sort of docu-soap, for instance, in Tanzania called Female Food Heroes, which, which follows uh, a group of, of uh, women through a, a whole range of issues that they face, and the public voted for, the, for their hero and their, or heroine. And the, the heroine actually used the prize money to buy land, by the way. So a plug for the land program. But there's, there are a lot of examples like this which are out there. Um, but that I didn't see it coming back. The next one was uh, this thing, creating an en enabling environment. Now, of course, that's a bit of a dull concept. concept. But, um, we've got a paper outside called Meaningful Action, which is, which is uh, I don't think it's massively radical. But I think that we, along with many others, have already worked out what, what an enabling environment should be. So do we really need to work it out all over again? We should just be um, prioritizing it. But it, did, it maybe came back like in one group, maybe in the green group. Um, now, I would say that um, in strengthening women's land rights is an important one. A lot of people have mentioned it during the day here. Obviously, I'm going to mention it because that's the program I'm promoting. Um, in the, the 35 or so countries where Oxfam has uh, land programming, uh, strengthening women's land rights is nearly always um, a key component of it. Um, and, and it would be, we believe that that's really a key way of empowering women. And it would be great if that was taken up or looked at more closely by, by the platform. And I, I think it came back a little bit, maybe from one of the groups. Then I've written, companies take a systemic approach to gender. And I did see the green and blue groups ref referring to this. I got, is that two minutes? Oh, that's okay. I can do that. Um, yeah, so you all know, or well, many of you will know that Oxfam's <laughs> run a campaign to challenge the food and beverage companies, the biggest ones in the world, to tackle issues like land and gender and, and climate. And, uh, the biggest companies in the world, the, the ones that are sourcing a lot of the commodities that are being uh, 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 exported from developing countries, uh, are very, very far behind in this area. And they, it's not a question of, yet of whether they've put in systems, in, although we heard some great examples today, in most cases it's about whether they have yet understand, understood and analyzed these issues in their own supply chains. So, and there are some big ones that have now made commitments on this, like Nestle and Mars and Mondelez. Um, but there's a long way to go. For, at the moment, we're still at the level of uh, commitments, and it really needs to be turned into action. Um, so there's a lot more to be done in that area. And finally, I, and I know it, someone mentioned it earlier today, making promoting women's land rights or women's rights explicit in any program design. How is this program going to promote uh, women's rights? That's you know, a, a central thing. I, I didn't really hear it coming back here but I would have thought that it would be a relatively obvious one for, for donors to take up. 
because, because our experience is that by making it explicit, then you get better outcomes, which, which uh, more equitable outcomes in, in the end. Um, okay, I've got two things, and then I'm going to stop, right? So one thing I felt slightly uncomfortable about, but it's also something that Oxfam struggles with, is the issue of influencing. That some, one of the groups mentioned about the need to influence uh, developing country governments. Um, Oxfam does this too. You know, we're also lobbying and, and, and directly trying to convince developing country governments. But I think that it, it has to be done in parallel, at least, or taking into account uh, uh, the aspirations and the demands of, of the people in those countries themselves. I mean, obviously, you take into account what the governments want, but let's be frank, we also need to support the voice of the populations. And I hope that um, uh, as a donor group, you think about ways to support um, uh, women's th uh, efforts to uh, find their own voice and claim their own rights. So I would raise that one again. And then I'm going to, my last point is about something which my colleague Laura from, uh, Laura from the Slow Food uh, mentioned this morning, is the, that there's a big systemic challenge here. That even e with all of these in, in initiatives and programs that, that the donor group can um, set up and, uh, and, and put into, in, into, into process, that, that you, that they may not actually challenge the bigger systemic issues that are on the table. And, and I don't know how the donor group tackles it, so it's a, another dilemma for us all. Um, if the dominant model in agriculture remains large-scale land-intensive um, investments around the world, these are, these are uh, a model which generally takes women's land away, um, and it's a model which tends to uh, give women low-paid, low-quality jobs. If that is the predominant model which, which all the political elites support, then how, how are these programs that we're going to do going to end up challenging um, that major challenge to women's economic empowerment? So that's a, a challenge which I'd like the donor group to think about too. Thanks very much. Sorry for talking so long. Thank you very much.